Russell Stroman, Chief Executive Officer of Strike Media. A very warm welcome to the Red Zone. Now, the case has been made before, but let's talk a little bit about the importance of mobile in South Africa. You say it can't be underestimated. I think we agree with you. But having said that, do you think sometimes that marketers do underestimate the power of mobile? Definitely from a marketing viewpoint. I think that from a consumer viewpoint, they understand this communication in your pocket is a hugely important thing for them. But from a, a marketing viewpoint, I think that marketers haven't quite grasped how to use it properly um, and how to make it effective You know, from a marketing channel viewpoint. Uh, everybody's walking around with a, a, some kind of uh, media device in their pocket, if you like. And uh, you know this can greatly be captured for marketing purposes. Why do you think marketers have been slow on the uptake? I think that the maturity of phones has taken some time to get now to where we are, like with the smartphones. And typically, you know, in the earlier generations of handsets, uh, the best that you could really do was maybe send an SMS message or something to that effect. And it wasn't really sexy from a marketing viewpoint, although effective and uh, hugely effective. Um, not sexy. And I think marketers do like to have things that are, are quite sexy and innovative. So is the sexy back now? Have we got that? I think it's on its, it's way. It's a good question, by the way. Is the sexy back? You know where we're going way. with this. Yeah. Well, it depends who you're talking yeah. to. But I think that the... I think that you know as we can start to do some really sexy things on mobile now with the with the growth of smartphones in not only in South Africa but in the world. But um, you know things like what we can do with applications, things that we can do with location, uh, specifically again from a marketing viewpoint, um, are becoming very very relevant. And there's some fantastic examples of great campaigns out there. Let's talk a little bit about location-based marketing in just a moment. But have we got to the point, or are we getting to the point, where a brand can comfortably go on a mobile campaign to the exclusion of all other platforms? Or is it still a supplementary or supportive brand campaign platform? I think it depends, again, on the campaign that you're trying to run. Uh, but definitely there are campaigns that can be exclusively run on mobile from start to finish. You don't need uh, much more than that because you're walking around with the internet in your pocket. You might be browsing on the internet itself. You drive you to some kind of Moby site, uh, drive you through to some call to action. Uh, huge amounts of different activities can happen. Because remember, the phone is still a phone, so you want to use it for calling. It's a data carrier, so you want to be able to use it for data. Um, you know, so it can carry, it's a message bearer. So it's got so many different facets to it, and it's running around in every consumer's pocket. So you can actually hit people when they're actually about to make their decision at the point of purchase. Let's not forget, a phone is still a phone. That's the quote of the day. Location-based marketing, what are we talking about here? Well, it's about proximity marketing, being able to target people in a specific area, or what we call, and I had to use text speak, geofencing, uh, where you'll be able to say, okay, this, this individual has entered my space, if you like, and I could therefore target him for, for some kind of, of, of call to action or some kind of marketing message um, just because he walked into that area or left as well. And I could give you a fantastic example from a, a company called Meatpack in Guatemala. Meatpack sell uh, uh, different kinds of sneakers, tackies, or whatever you like, like, I don't know, Puma and yeah. Nike, Adidas and so forth. And what they did is they geofenced in a mall, they geofenced their competitor store. And as you walked into the competitor store, so your phone would wake up and say, oh, by the way, you can get 100% discount off at Meatpack. And then it started counting down, 99, 98, 97. And you had to get to Meatpack in to stop the discount. That is, so what, you just had this turnaround of people absolutely. walking in and walking out? Yeah. And uh, there was some guy who managed to cross the mall in a few seconds yeah. and managed to get like an 89% discount on his purchase. That is astonishing. I mean, the creativity around that is amazing as well. Yeah, it was yeah. one of the Can Line Awards. It was really well done. Uh, QR codes? QR codes Never are, quite got them, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> From a marketing viewpoint, QR codes are not quite um, effective. QR codes are very much an uh, information holder, if you like. Uh, I've got one on the back of my business card, so if you wanted to add me to your contact list rather than typing up the whole message, you yeah. scan my QR code in your contact list. We use it for ticketing because we have a mobile ticketing system at Strike Media. So we can send you a QR code to your phone, you arrive at the venue, we scan the QR code and it says, welcome Jeremy, you're in seat number 23J, and it marks you off the attendance list and we can do all kinds of good things from that point of view. If you're walking around an exhibition space, for example, uh, you know, you might want to go and, and visit a booth in an exhibition 
and the guy scans your QR code, he's automatically got your information, you know, that same ticket. From a marketing viewpoint, you know, it's not a very sexy thing. It's a limited practicality, but it's not a big brand builder. It's just a link into something. What we found is in the augmented reality space is that you can actually use rather an image as a trigger to do things and and basically bring your phone alive, if you like, uh, rather than a QR code. Um, not to say that they're not useful. I mean, they have been very effective for some of the campaigns that we've run. But typically as an information passing mechanism rather than as a, as a sexy kind of marketing application itself. In this mobile space, what should marketers be looking out for in 2014? Well, the growth of smartphones is is very, very relevant. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit and tell you, uh, you know, back to when I first met you. Um, and I remember talking to people back in those days that said, if you look, if you didn't have an email address, you're not going to be in business in 10 years' time. Uh, and if you didn't have a website, you know, then what are you doing? And, you know, if you look at a company letterhead, it used to have, uh, in those days, geez, I hate giving my age away, but in those days it used to have, you know, the telephone number, which was the switchboard, and the fax number. Yes. Um, you know, now oh, I remember the now, old fax number, yes. Yeah. Remember that one, yeah. And uh, um, and now they've got to a stage where it's got not only the fax number and the telephone number of the switchboard, but it's got an email address and it's got a website address. Now, the thing is, is that people have got preferred means of mechanisms for communicating with companies or, 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 or brands. And, uh, you know, so... You know, you could just as well be putting your SMS short code on there or putting your Moby site link or even a QR code to take you to that Moby site if you wished. Um, you know, so that's kind of the things that have changed. Now, obviously, with the smartphones and the, the upgrading of the networks, we're talking about uh, 4G coming into play and so forth, where things are getting faster and smarter. Um, you know, you need to have an app. You need to have a Moby site. You know, you need to make sure that you can communicate with your consumers on their preferred mechanism. So what marketers in 2014 should be looking out for is they should be looking out for the growth of, of smartphone applications, specifically in South Africa and Africa, um, and at the same time to be able to leverage that into their own space. And things that come into that space are things that are things like social networking as well, because that's a huge part of being mobile. Appreciate the insight. Thank you very much for uh, joining us, uh, Russell Stroman from uh, Strike Media. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much.